we're gonna start here in a moment, but I, uh, <laughs> it's, it's fine. <laughs> well, I guess we can start with some introductions right here before we bring our guest star here. Well, as you guys remember, it's me and Voltage once more emceeing for Laura Post Q&A panel. You know Voltage, she's been at Morning Announcements with me, and you know me, I'm your host of PersonaCon here. So, hope to see you guys here, and I hope you're excited to hear some great questions here. And, let's get our lovely guests ready to be brought in. You know her as the amazing gymnast from Persona 5 Royal. Please welcome Laura Post! Woo! Where's Laura Post? Did <laughs> you get out of there? Where is Mrs. Post? Can you bring her in? Oh no, there she is. There we go. <laughs> here I <Alrighty>. am. <laughs> Welcome. I was like, I'm here. You can't hear me. I hope you see me eventually. <laughs> I saw you. Cool. Hi. <laughs> Welcome. We're excited to have you. Excited to be back. Oh, it looks like it. the chat's popping off seeing you all over again. The lower post text chat. Oh. <laughs> So for the mods that are recording this, just let us know when we're good to go and start on questions. Um, in the meantime, Laura Post, thank you so much for joining us. It's really cool to have you here. Travis has been recording. All right, so we're good to go. Woo! Oh, Hoodie, if you want to kick us off with a question. Wow. A lot of people want to know, Laura Post, and, I, and me, myself included. What was your first start in voice acting? What got you into the industry and what was the most... Like, what just was your origins for it? Yeah, my origin story, but it's so long. Um, well, I, I wanted to be a voice actor since I was a little kid. Uh, I spent most of my childhood and teenagerhood pursuing a career in like Broadway because uh, this was like early days of the internet so that was just how i thought you could do voiceover the voice actors that i knew the names of like the disney princesses and stuff i'm like they're broadway actors so obviously the only way to become a voice actor is by being a broadway star first um that's wrong that's an incorrect assumption but that's fine because i figured out when i went to my first anime convention like oh you can you can go you know not straight for disney princess and actually just have a career doing voiceover so uh i started all of my like early training was online and then eventually i moved to la and i took a bunch of classes out here and through hard work and determination and a pinch of luck i somehow have managed to make a career off it so far <laughs> just a crazy feeling sometimes knowing that you're sort of accomplishing your dreams of doing what you want to do as a teenager and you're still yeah. doing them now it's it's kind of weird it's definitely weird i'm always ready for everything to just like disappear <laughs> poof it was a dream well i think you'll be sticking us with a long time <laughs> i actually so, also want to know how is voice acting that you are a big old voice actor now how has it changed your life positively um my gosh i don't even know like Voice acting is such a part of my life that I can't imagine my life without voice. Like my my husband, I met on a voiceover forum when I was learning all about voiceover and first got it got started. Um, <laughs> so really? there's there's a lot of things in my life that like if voiceover wasn't part of my life, my life would be way different. Um, but uh, yeah, I, voiceover has just always been like doing voiceover has been part of my life since I was like a little kid imitating voices I heard on TV and, you know, eventually finding my own voice and becoming an actress. Uh, I can't, I can't imagine my, I, I think I would be a much more poorly uh, a, adjusted person without voiceover as an outlet. <laughs> oh, one's got to have their outlet, right? Exactly. <laughs> And just one last thing to get a lot of people are saying, what's your favorite thing now that you are a voice actor? What's been your favorite like highlight moments and just what what makes you so happy to be a voice actor with everything? Oh my gosh. It, well, the best part for me about being a voice actor is just being able to take everything that's bothering you in your normal life and sort of 
throw it in the closet, like close the door, shove it away. It's gone. Everything's gone for now. And just inhabiting somebody else's spirit and story and delivering that it's, it's just, it's such a freeing and fun and invigorating experience that, um, yeah, I, that's probably my favorite part of being a voice actor. It's also just icing on the cake when other people uh, see your performance and it speaks to them and you are able to like either inspire or comfort or somehow move the audience. That's like just even better. <laughs> awesome. You know, that's such a cool feeling too, whenever you get that. And we're really excited, especially even having you here. I know um, some voice actors love to be able to do panels and just see the amount of people they've impacted with their work so far. Um, and one of those things that's really important too is, um, you know, there's a lot of young fledgling, fledging voice actors who want to enter the career of voice acting. What would you sort of tell that person with regards to maybe advice or means of getting started? Any foundational notes? Um, the, the advice I usually give seems flippant, but I swear it's not. And it's just get started doing it. If you want to do it, just start doing it. Go buy a cheap mic. It doesn't matter if you have an expensive mic or a cheap mic or any of that. And just start getting that practice in. There are so many online communities you can join where people will gladly give you feedback. And you can start getting that, like, early experience in. Um, because like I said, I mean, I, I was, I did a bunch of theater in high school and it was great. And, um, you know, it was useful in a lot of ways, but I feel like I learned so much more about acting actually just by doing it online and getting feedback from my peers and growing that way than I ever did from, you know, a teacher who had 50 to a hundred other kids that they were paying attention to. Of course. Hmm. Yeah. No, you know, it's really helpful advice, and I feel like that really is applicable to so many different facets of life. So it's a really just motivating thing to hear. I like that a lot. <laughs> You're like a wall quote or something right there. <laughs> exactly. Um, if I may, let's uh, dive into some questions maybe about your role in Persona 5 Royal, Kasumi. Um, so one of the big questions that uh, I was really curious about, and Chambeline had a similar question uh, was there any change that made that you made mentally to your acting when you made the switch from voicing Kasumi to Sumire? Uh, absolutely, 100%. Uh, we actually had, when we were recording, we would, they had the characters listed separately. So it wasn't like if I was Kasumi, I was being Kasumi. And if I was being Sumi, I was being Sumi. Uh, <laughs> and uh, there's actually four different versions they had so that I knew we would know because you record video games not always in chronological order so um depending on what I was doing and where Kasumi was as a character uh we had four versions so there was I, I don't want to yeah I don't want to like give too many spoilers uh right. for people who might not have finished it yet uh <laughs> so apologies uh, but there's, I did yeah, not no, no spoiler worries. warning prior <laughs> Uh, but yeah, there's there's four versions that we had. So I was always aware of where I was as a character and um, what like what kind of where I was emotionally. And there's there is a slight difference between the two voices, the two big voices. Um, I feel like you can hear them in one particular cutscene in the game. <laughs> and I'll just call it that particular cutscene in the game. Just uh, leave it there. Yeah, we'll I feel like there. everyone knows exactly what cutscene it is. So, sure. um, yeah. Um, let's see here. We have a question from Kaya here. Is there any aspect of you personally that you incorporate into Kasumi's voice or character herself that wasn't scripted? Oh my goodness. Um, yes. I, uh, there's, Sumi, Sumi is such a deep character. Um, <laughs> so there's definitely a lot of me in her. Um, there's, uh, Oh my gosh. I, I don't want to start the panel off with like such a, such a downer, but I know that this came up last year and I'll just like say it. So um, I actually uh, experienced a great loss when I was a teenager. Um, my, my, uh, my little sister passed away 
which you find out pretty early in the game that that also happened to Kasumi. And uh, so there was a lot of that coming through, I think, in my performance. Um, I dedicate a lot of that performance to my little sister. Uh, so there's there's a lot of that going on um, when I got to play her. Uh, so yeah. let's get some yeah. love for Laura Post already for that. <laughs> it's okay. It's original. totally fine. It, it it was a long time ago. Um, but yeah. So my there's, thanks. But yeah, she's Kasumi means a lot to me on so many different levels, and that is one of the big levels. <laughs> Uh, for me, I can see. I can see how. Mm -hmm. Do you? Um, a epic wants to know. Do you have a favorite scene involving Kasumi in Persona Five Royal? Uh, Maybe on a lighter note. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I love them all. Oh my gosh, it's so hard. The probably my favorite scene, like the scene I was most excited to do when finally we got to the scene, was the Hawaii scene <laughs> because oh, I was funny. following like all the early stuff for the game. Uh, so I was like, oh, man, I had seen it, you know, the Konnichiwa. And I was like, oh, I can't wait to see how we're going to, like, do it and what we're going to do. And we did a million different versions of it, too. Um, really? <laughs> yeah, because they weren't sure how they wanted to, like, localize it and which way they were going to go and which would, like, play best and all of that stuff. So I was super excited. That's probably, like, my favorite is the Hello Senpai because I was just so excited. <laughs> she said it. She said it, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose they were probably trying to match the uh, cadence of the original scene a little exactly, bit there. Exactly. Yeah, you want to try and yeah. get the same, the same, I you know, evoke the same idea, but unfortunately, the pun doesn't work as well in English. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we have a question from Albert Ray Quaza. So you were aware about Persona Five Scramble and the dancing thing. Would you have liked to have cost me any of these spinoffs? Have her show her gymnastic skills or anything? Heck yeah. I mean, I'm always, uh, I, I stream on Twitch and sometimes people ask like, oh, do you hope that there's DLC for Strikers or, oh, do you want to be in a dancing game? Yes. The answer is always going to be yes. Any chance I get to play Kasumi again, I'm going to say yes, 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 yes. Um, but I have no control over that. So, you know, I can dream just as much as anyone else. <laughs> Turning on Twitter, y'all. Laura Post, we got to get Kasumi as DLC and Strikers and dancing. <laughs> Hey, uh, we have a question from Yolko. The question is, uh, what was it like being a new addition to the cast when you were first starting to portray Kasumi? And were you at all nervous? I was so nervous. <laughs> I, I remember the, I knew that they were going to announce it at E3 in 2019. Yeah, I had to remember <laughs> what year it was. Uh, and I, I wasn't positive if they were going to actually announced that it was me or if they were just going to use some of the voice clips and I w the whole week leading up to E3 it was like I was a five-year-old waiting for Christmas all over again I was like every day <laughs> is so painfully long why is it not the day yet I'm going to die before this happens um <laughs> uh but I I did survive it and then it was the day of I was like shaking because I was like what if everybody hates me what if I get recast oh my gosh oh my gosh I can't I don't know if I can handle this and then thank god the persona community and fan base is like the nicest most welcoming kindest community I've like ever dealt with they were so great and supportive and I was just super happy that people liked it <laughs> Uh, that's always such a stressful feeling. It's like, I hope yeah. people like my performance. I, I hope not everyone <laughs> hates me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, Middle of the Nerd wants to say, how much about Persona did you know before becoming the voice actor of Kasumi? <laughs> so I knew a little, I, I'd played, I hadn't finished Persona 5 Vanilla yet. As soon as I got cast as Kasumi, I was like, I better finish Persona 5 vanilla because it's gonna get spoiled for me while recording if i don't finish it <laughs> so i like plowed through that real fast uh almost platinum it, but i really hate baseball and fishing i could not get those <laughs> trophies to save my life and i just went nope i'm i'm piecing out of getting this platinum trophy it's fine um, <laughs> but um so i knew five i have not played four yet. I intend to play four. Oh, you I'm excited. I, but I that. do. I know a lot of spoilers for four slash. I know a lot of about four because of the the Hi I'm Daisy comics. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Comic dub. So 
doing my so horrible like, impression of Tomar before before you hopped in the call. <laughs> yeah, it's like, yeah, I am. Uh, I I love those comics. I still reference those comics. Like when I go live on Twitch, half the time it says "social link go" <laughs> because it's just great. Those yes. things are so funny. Such a fitting thing. <sighs> Speaking of uh, social links, in a way. Um, just based on protagonist vibes, do you think it would have been as memorable if you had voiced the initial idea of Kasumi being the main character? So if Kasumi was the main character, would it have been different for you in any way? Uh, this is it would have been Zach. a lot different, I think. Uh, thank you, Zach. I think it would have been a lot different um, just because like, the whole story wouldn't be there. Uh, <laughs> so there's a lot about her story as a confidant that I really just like really attracted me and uh was just fun for me to voice in a challenging and like intense way um <laughs> but uh it also be cool to be a main character i mean it's kind of co cool like xander's cool joker's cool but boy i'd have to shout a lot of persona names if i had to do that i don't know how how much i'd enjoy like okay time to shout personas for four hours <laughs> i thought never crossed my mind until now yep. but oh man that must be, yep, that's tiring be a for whole, i mean i don't i don't know how xander's sessions went and how they broke it up but i imagine that there had to at least be like okay let's do an hour of you know jack frost arsene uh, and then, like, the hard ones to say, too, you know, like, I can't even think of them, but, like, there's there's some really complicated names in there, and you've got to shout them out. <laughs> yeah. For real. <laughs> For real? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we have a question from Magic Maddie. Although Cosme is lively and reasonably your favorite, who's your other favorite Phantom Thief? Oh, that's so hard. I have, I have, like, there's a lot I like. Um, I really, 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 really... It's hard for me to pick between Ryuji, Futaba, and Haru. I love them all for very different reasons, as you can tell, since they are very different characters. Um, <laughs> but I do love them all dearly. Um, Ryuji's like, my boy. Yeah. And Haru is my cute little floof that in Vanilla is probably my like best girl, girl I would date. Uh, in my first playthrough, I actually dated Hifumi, but then I really regretted when I got to Haru's, like, I had to reject Haru, and I was like, oh, this is the hardest thing I've ever had to do. I hate this. <laughs> um, and then Futaba's just, like, a fantastic little gremlin that I want to be friends with in real life, which I guess I kind of am, because I'm friends with Linbeck, but Linbeck is not Futaba, so, you know, kind of right. different. <laughs> and, you know, that's actually an interesting, that's an actually interesting point that you bring up, because we do have a question from Zell that asks... Have you ever had a problem where people called you by a character's name that you played and sort of treated you like that character? Yes. And if so, <laughs> how have you reacted slash how has that, has that bothered you? Has that made things just awkward or is it funny? It's that like? it, de it depends on the, the thing that they're doing, I guess. Like when I'm like Twitch streaming and stuff, if people say like Kasumi stuff, especially if like Kasumi's on screen, it's like, sure. But generally speaking, I'm not, like, I am not my characters, and I do not speak for my characters. Like, the characters that I voice are created by writers and directors and artists, and so it's not my place to to speak for a character. So when someone tries to speak to me as the character, it's a little weird because I'm not. I, like, I give them a voice, and that's great, and I speak to them on a deep level if I'm lucky, um, like with Kasumi, but it's not me uh but really i i get it from other things usually villains and i'm like you want to call me this villain this like despicable villain that i played you go ahead but that's <laughs> not what i'm like at all in real life and i usually just ignore it like it's uh, queen helenia yeah it's it's just yeah i just ignore it it's fine like i'm not gonna get upset i'm not gonna be like hey don't do that unless you cross some weird boundaries which i don't think i've had anyone do but yeah it's like I don't know. It's just sort of like, okay. <laughs> Andrew sure. slash Chibi Beads wants to ask, uh, a lot of Fire Emblem Three Houses VAs had some wacky and fun moments with Patrick Seitz as the VA director. Do you have any that stood out as you voiced Catherine from Fire Emblem Three Houses? Um, I only have one that I remember really well, and it, it's not so much 
with Patrick, but uh, like Patrick didn't have a part in it, but I flubbed a line where it's like, um, I keep forgetting what part of the story it's in, but I have to say like Thunderbrand hungers oh no or something like that or like thunder thunderbrand something and it's like really intense and i'm like shouting it and i went to do it and i was like thunderbland and i was like well that's it now it's thunderbland it's just thunderbland it's fine <laughs> whoops yeah well, that is that's a pretty pretty fun one all the same though yeah so. i really do like thunderbland i've definitely joked about thunderbland in real life after the fact because just get on that draw catherine sing thunderbland <laughs> Ah, the Thunderbland, woo! Yeah, and you know, it's interesting that you have sort of that broad spectrum of characters, both sort of heroes and villains at this point. And I was wondering <laughs> if there are any specific villains um, you like to ask, or you would like to be in future series or game franchises as well. This was asked by someone whose name I can't find right now, but it's in my brain. <laughs> uh, video game voice, that's a Cosmonites. That's the one, thank you. All right. Um, gosh, are there any villains that I really want to voice? And maybe I'm also like a follow up. Yeah. Maybe also a follow up. Are there specific types of villains you like doing? Whether they're the really chaotic, you know, milking the scene, hands up in the air villains versus the uh, nuanced, reserved villains. I definitely oh, have fun with with chaotic evil. Yeah. <laughs> like the like the playful, you know. Uh, like any any if a villain has pigtails, chances are I probably am gonna have a fun time voicing it. Um, <laughs> usually like... a safe bet. Um, gosh, I mean, but I will also say I don't know if she counts, but uh, Catwoman would be would be cool. I want to I want to voice Batgirl more than anything on the planet. But really, anyone involved in Batman in any way, shape, or form, I am there. I want to do it. <laughs> um, sure. But. Um, so Catwoman's obviously not that bonkers, but uh, I, I'm trying to think. And I'm like, well, the last villain I can think of that I was like, oh, I really want to voice that villain was Isabella from Promise Neverland. And I got to. Mm. Um, <laughs> oh, good and job like, on that, by the way. Yeah. Harley Quinn is another cool one, but I got to. Like, I'm like, oh, look at me. So hashtag blessed. Um, <laughs> Things are coming true. So, um, yeah, I'm trying to think. But I do, I do like... I do enjoy, um, you know, the the really un. I like giving the unpredictable performances and sort of having that freedom to like something that you think is going to be big, then playing it small and like kind of getting those comedy beats in there along with being a villain. Uh, I also think it's kind of fun to be the villain that's like the butt of the joke, kind of oh, like yeah. our in oh, Neptunia. God. That can be that's really fun for me too because I like to make people laugh. So. Um, not that I don't enjoy the subtle performances, like with Isabella, where I was like, oh, I really want to voice her because I feel like there's a lot of stuff going on there. And I was right. And then I was very excited that I got to to bring her to life in English. Um, so, yeah, those those are my things I like about villains. But I can't think of a specific villain where I'm like, ooh, that, please, <laughs> right <laughs> off the top of my head. Sure. We have a question from Hope. We know that you've voiced a lot of dancers before in media, but how was it like voicing Primrose from Octopath Traveler? Oh, that was so fun. Um, she's, her, you know, just in the demo alone, it was like, this is very, very heavy. <laughs> Especially because I think in the audition, it was just like, she's a, a former princess and who's been like outcast or something like that. Um, so I just did a thing and then they were like, you booked it. And I was like, great. And then you get in there and it's like, wow, this is a lot. This is a lot to unpack. Um, <laughs> but it was, it, she was, I had a, a lot of fun with that character, even though it was super intense, even in just the demo. <laughs> so you got a lot of Primrose fans in the chat already going really excited yeah. about that. I mean, I like some of your lines a lot. pretty great. I'm just saying. <laughs> She is pretty awesome. You do a wonderful job as her. Thanks. For sure. So continuing on, going even uh, between different games and different series and everything, we have a question from Yumi. Uh, because of your involvement in the Love Live series, have you at all played any of the Love Live mobile games? And if or and also have you kept up with the groups following Muse? Uh, yes, I've played the mobile games. I 
have had a minor addiction to school idol festival although i'm currently in an in an off period it became it was it was really hardcore for a very long time and then like with the in the past year or so it's been a little more like i'll play really hardcore for like three weeks and then i'll go be off for a month and then i'll play really hardcore for three weeks and be off for a month um but i've played so much of school idol festival i tried the new one i'm forgetting the name of the new one off the top of my head i think it was just a little hard for me to get it like having to be like oh i have to play through all of the easy versions again and like do all the tutorial stuff again where i really just want to play the hard versions of songs um so i didn't i ended up just going okay so that's there for when i run out of energy in school idol festival which barely ever <laughs> happens because i have a lot of energy in school idol <laughs> festival because i'm a very high level um a little bit addicted just a little bit addicted things in moderation right <laughs> yeah look what what really had me going was for a long time i really 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 needed absolutely needed the fairy tale nozomi idolized and oh, i yeah. could not get it on any polls ever it took me like two years after those card sets came out for me to finally get it um so yeah that that kept me hardcore addicted for a really long time because i really needed fairy tale nozomi hardcore um <laughs> she's so beautiful i love her so Got much i love that whole set i actually have a big giant poster of that set uh like someone did art of them all in those costumes in my living room and it's one of my favorite pictures i've ever owned um, amazing that's it's so, so cool beautiful. I'm happy about that uh, we have another question right here by Cosplay Tarumi. How was it like voice acting Valentine in Skullgirls? Was she your first fighting game character? How did it differ from other gigs? Um, wow, she was, I think, my first fighting game character ever. She was actually one of the like one of my earlier large roles. Uh, she came out right around the same time that Ari did in League of Legends, and that was when I think people started to actually notice me. <laughs> um, prior to that, I think it was like. R R4 too was uh, was earlier than them I guess but um she it was it was really funny because I didn't actually audition for Valentine they booked me on Valentine based off of my audition for Parasol oh. and so uh they were like you booked Valentine in uh Skullgirls and I remember emailing like okay cool what what's the character like because you know I want to try and prep for the session make sure my voice is in the right spot and everything and I'm thinking it's like a side character or something and the email just responded with sexy. <laughs> I was like, okay, cool. So I went in not knowing what was going to happen at all. Um, <laughs> but then I was like, okay, cool. We're going to do sexy. Um, <laughs> and then we figured out like what she was actually like as a character in the booth. And uh, they told me about her story and what was going on. And, uh, but yeah, fighting game sessions are are really intense because you're, doing all of the fight sounds in a session. That's really all you do in those games, uh, especially in Skullgirls. We didn't do the story until after the fact. Uh, oh. So yeah, it was just, it was just like a two, two, I want to say it was a two hour session. It might've been a three or maybe it was like a three hour session. We finished in two and a half. I don't remember. It was a really long time ago now. Uh, but yeah, you know, it's, you just do like, okay, so we have to do throwing the syringes and we need like, six different versions of that and we need this many versions of getting hit and for uh for skull girls in particular i remember they wanted to make sure that like each move had a variation so like time for your physical it wouldn't just be like you know me go time for your physical and then that was the only version you ever heard there was like they we we'd do like four and then they'd pick two and two would go in the game so that it wasn't repetitive and annoying at least in sure. theory Although I managed to annoy myself when I was trying to learn how to use Valentine and I kept accidentally refilling the syringes instead of doing the move I wanted to do. So I just kept going, ready for your shots, ready for your shots, ready for your shots. And I was like, shut up, me. <laughs> Please stop. I'm getting annoyed uh, by myself. I got, I'm going to kill this woman. Oh, wait. <laughs> yes. Well, yeah. And it's interesting that you bring up your fighting games uh, sessions and then compare that to some other sessions you do, because you have a wide variety of different characters you've played. What kind of voice uh, preparation and other preparation do you do for your varying roles? Just because, um, and does that change from one session to another? This was asked by the Divine Spectre. 
Um, it absolutely changes from from one character to another. Um, it depends. So, like for example, when I was going in to record Harley Quinn, I made sure to sing in the accent and do the accent. And since I knew where her voice was, try to like keep practice being in that voice so that it was like comfortable and rested nicely. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, but sometimes you go in and you just know you're going in for a session for something that has a code name and you have no idea what you're going to do. So then I usually just try to, uh, exercise my full range, usually sing in the car. I mean, this is before COVID where everything's recorded from home now, but, uh, usually I would sing in the car on the way to a session. Uh, so one of my go-to songs, if I don't know what I'm doing is this is my idea from Swan Princess oh. because it's got like you're doing a boy and a girl from five to 20 and plus there's an old man and an old woman and a chorus so I'm like cool that should cover like most of everything um, really good warm up wow yeah oh, wow. it like sort that. of gives you the 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 full spectrum there uh but yeah so and if but again if I know what I'm like like when I was doing Love Live, I would sing in the Nozomi voice because I knew what voice I was going to do. So no problem there. But yeah, sometimes you just don't know what you're going to do. So you just get the whole instrument warmed up. Seems smart. Going back to your multiple like... roles here, uh, Butterfingers wants to ask, what was it like voicing a character in Kill a Kill? Do you have any memorable or fun moments with the other voice actors there? Uh, I mean, Kill a Kill was a trip. And I'm, I'm like super, 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 super good friends with Erica Mendez. So that was like a real fun time for us both. Um, just cause you know, we're, it's fun to be in projects with your friends. What can I say? Uh, <laughs> my favorite story from that actually was, it wasn't Ragyo at all. It was the, the club leaders that I, I had to do is there was like the weird clown chick that I think rides a unicycle and she was a club leader. And then there was like the ping pong chick that was like, you're gonna something my flaming serve and she like blows fire everywhere. <laughs> and basically uh, Erica texted me after her session being like, I flubbed my takes because I was laughing at how you sounded, Laura. And I was like, perfect. That's my only goal in life is to make your, your sessions take longer by messing you up with laughter. Ha 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 ha. It's a satisfying feeling, making your friends laugh. Exactly. Yeah. So I also have some questions here that are kind of a sort of battle royale of sorts, but to your feelings. The Gaming Gryffindor wants to know, Cosme versus Valentine versus Raggio versus Diana Cavendish. Who wins out as your favorite of these four roles and why? Kasumi, sorry. I'm sorry, other other guys. You're great and you're wonderful. And like Diana, you're a real close one. I love you. You're near and dear to my heart because, you know, that was my first anime directing job. So, whew. Mm -hmm. But <sighs> Kasumi's just like, she just, she's such a wonderful character and there's just so much going on with her that really speaks to me as we mentioned earlier in the session and she's really layered so i had like a lot to work with as an actor Ugh, she's just great i yeah i have to pick kasumi i know we're not supposed to pick favorites as actors it's always like oh you can't make me pick a favorite between my kids it's kasumi it's kasumi i love all my kids blue. equally but this one you know is is first honor roll student and a medal winning gymnastic so <laughs> <laughs> sorry other kids diana's like you know i'm also an honor roll a student and i'm a witch and i'm like yeah that's cool but kasumi you're the middle <laughs> child <laughs> this isn't about you i love you diana you're wonderful but if i had to pick one it, oh, kasumi just i mean i i cried when i booked when i got the email saying that i booked kasumi um I really didn't think I was going to get the part. So yeah, I just, I, I had just finished a session and I got into my car and I saw an email from my agent and I opened it, not knowing what it was about. And then when I read it, I just sat there and cried for like five minutes before I called my husband and then my mom. <laughs> oh, that, that's so cool. And in a yeah. very heartwarming way. Like, <laughs> Oh, that's cool. You were crying in your car when you found out you got No, but it was they were happy tears. It's good. It's happy good. tears. Very of happy tears. Of course. Of course. 
<laughs> Going back with Kasumi again, um, we have from host two zero uh, exclamation point eight. So I think twenty eighteen. Um, are there any lines of Kasumi that you like to use in real life when you're just talking with people, or you live by? Um, uh, no, I don't think so. Not that I can think of off the top of my head. I I tend to meme things that I don't that I'm not in, like the Hi I'm Daisy comics, where it's like, wow, I'm still referencing that, you know, however many the decade later or whatever it is. Yeah. Uh, same yeah. thing with like Homestar Runner quotes, here I am, you know, in labor, the year of our Lord twenty twenty one doing yeah, labor daber. Yeah. Or or believe it or not, I'm walking around. I never <laughs> thought I could twig or tweet. <laughs> Like it's it's the dumbest. I know I'm dumb. Um, it's it's, quote, it's quotable. What can you exactly. do? Exactly. But yeah, I can't. <laughs> yep, I do that one too. Check my email. Check my email. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I can't think of anything I meme that I've voiced, uh, like including Kasumi and other things included. I can't think of any. Um, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So. Since we're on Kasumi, we're going to ask a bit of a very sort of tech, acting, acting, acting technical question in a way, um, or maybe character based a little bit. Lucari wants to know, after the events of third semester, Kasumi had grown so much and become a much stronger and more whole of a person. How do you think if she were to come back for a future game, would this reflect in her personality, voice or quotes? Uh, I think it absolutely would. That's actually one of the... Uh, when I said earlier, there were four, four things, four different types that were listed in the script for the voice stuff. That fully realized version is one of the four voice types. So oh. I think that uh, she absolutely would go from there if they were to include her in anything else in the future. <laughs> I'm trying so hard to avoid spoilers, but even though it's been like over a year, like I get it. I haven't finished the game yet. Um, I'm Courteous. streaming it, so you know we're we're at uh, we're at the origin in the original game, the penultimate dungeon. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Penultimate palace, but now I guess it's the third ultimate. <laughs> That's the right word, right? Sure. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah. So the what would have been the second to last but now it's the third to last palace uh, the one I that comes travis... out to the casino <laughs> oh yes that that's is, where we that are is... yeah that's that's an interesting one for sure mm -hmm. and i know travis dropped the link to your twitch on uh in the chat earlier but if you wanted to feel free always to also plug anything that you oh, want yeah sure to. it is laura post voice which is the same as my twitter and my instagram you can't see the amazing poses that i'm doing while i say these but just imagine i'm doing really cool jojo's poses while i say my twitch my twitter and my instagram <laughs> the hand in front of the face i can already yeah. visualize it <laughs> He's exactly. doing one right now himself. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. Speaking of Cosme coming in more stuff, so if Cosme somehow does come into Persona 5 Scramble or Strikers, what do you think they'd fight like? How would you want know. them to fight? I don't know. I mean, I assume she'd do lots of flips and stuff because that's she's a gymnast, dang it. You use what you've got. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I haven't actually played Strikers yet, so it's hard for me to say compared to like what the other characters are doing in Strikers. I'm hoping to play Strikers after I finally finish Royal. Um, Understandable. <laughs> but yeah, I imagine she'd, you know, maybe catch people with the ribbon. That'd be cool because you couldn't do that in in uh, Royal, but it'd be fun to like, really cool. you know, do like a get over here, but with a gymnastics ribbon. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mortal Kombat character. <laughs> Yeah, man, Kasumi would be the weirdest Mortal Kombat character in the world. She's got the she'd strangest like, fatality him, and she'd ever. Be like, I don't think I can do that. <laughs> Let's them die of natural causes. She just hello senpais them and gives them a heart attack and they die. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> We're just setting up for Persona Five Arena. It's fine. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, so here's a fun question from Ryokin. Uh, are there any gymnastics things that Kasumi does in the game that you can do in person? Or if, <laughs> and if no. not, or so, are there any that you would be you would ever want to do? 
I used to be able to do a really good cartwheel. Like as a kid, I was like cartwheel master, perfect form, straight body, the whole nine yards. Uh, I have never been able to do a flip. I have never been able to do a handstand or a headstand or a pull up. <laughs> like I am, I am not in good shape. Um, <laughs> it, yeah, I, I can't think I, it would be cool to be able to do a flip. But I think I'm like, in addition to just not being in shape and being unable to do a flip, I feel like I'd be too scared to do a flip. The The most I ever was able to do was like a, a diving tumble kind of thing. Like, a, I forget the word for it, but like when I was in martial arts, you kind of like oh, yeah. jump into a tumble and you, you learn how to distribute your body weight so you don't hurt yourself and you use it in martial arts. Um right. I was able combat roll. Thanks, text chat. I was able to I'm do a combat roll. That was that was uh, I was able to do that. That I think was like as much as my uh, guts. That's the level of my guts. I need to level up my guts if I want to do more gymnastics. <laughs> <laughs> we have a question from uh, Eclipse that that's also related to the Persona series. So you do voice Cosme, but if you could voice any other character in the Persona series. Who would you want to voice? Who? Okay. So I think I would want to voice. <laughs> uh, again, remember that like all I really know about the other Persona games is like the High and Daisy comics and things I've seen online. So knowing that, I would really like to voice uh, Naoto. <laughs> oh, that would be really interesting. If you, yeah, and cause, since you. Cause she's a boy, just so you know. She's oh, great. Boy. <laughs> I would be very curious to see the reaction you have to Naoto's story in Persona 4 because Naoto rocks. I mean, that's that's basically my understanding of Naoto. Like, I don't, everyone's like, so you've never played Persona 4 at all? I'm like, no, but I do have a best girl and it's Naoto. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'm, I'm looking forward to playing 4 just for that. <laughs> of course, of course. We have a question from Yudo. Um, after a, over a year of having voiced Kasumi in Persona 5 Royal, has there been any change in your perspective of the Persona series as a whole? Um, gosh. No, no. I mean, I always thought, like, even though I hadn't, I had played, Pers I was playing Persona 5, but, like, I had a lot of my friends, you know, they're like, oh, Persona 4 is my favorite. You need to play Persona 4. Like, I've always wanted to play more of the games i still want to now i still have a lot of respect for the series uh so i feel like i'm in the same place i don't think it changed i still just think it's super cool i just think it's extra super cool that i'm in it <laughs> right i mean there's and especially if you already have such a high opinion of it already it's not mm -hmm. like it has to change anything it's kind of like if i were to be in a final fantasy game and i'd be like i still think they're oh. really awesome yeah <laughs> the dream isn't it that is the I dream right. oh, man. <laughs> let's see here oh uh, we have a little you can chill over stuff we have ash ketchup what's it like being the best voice in the persona series <laughs> I mean, it's pretty fabulous. Um, you know, every day I just relax in my pool and have my butler bring me a nice cocktail. And he goes, here you go, senpai. <laughs> senpai. Shall that be anything else? <laughs> <laughs> of course, of um, course. But yeah, no, it's, it is, it's really cool to be a character that a lot of people uh, resonate with. I think that's, it's honestly again it's like outside of my wildest dreams so it's really hard for me to even put into words but it's super cool seems like it now you mentioned also being in say final fantasy but uh tom cm91 wants to know is there any other series that you would like to voice act for are there any dream series that you want to be a part of i mean final fantasy would be really cool um be not fun. gonna Don't deny it Especially if they did like a six remake, and I could be Celeste. Yes, she's my favorite. Yes. Girl. Her and yes. her and Kistis are my top tier girls in all of Final Fantasy. Yes. So you know, throwing that out there to the universe. It's also um, such a complicated I mean, technically, character. I guess I've been. I, I would like to be a real character in Final Fantasy because I've been in. I was in Seven Remake as Incidentals. I was in Thirteen as Incidentals. But I want to. You were you also in Fourteen as well. Briefly? Oh yeah, I'm Umbrita in fourteen, but that's that's a MMO. I want to be a 
in in a I want to be a playable character. Dang it! There we go. A named playable character. I'll be a playable character in a Final Fantasy series or any Batman game that exists. <laughs> oh, there's Final Fantasy 16 around the corner that may or may not be That's cast. True. We don't know. Who knows? Don't yeah. Know. Not like you would tell um, us if you're in or not. So yeah. let's yeah. just move right along. <laughs> <laughs> Pokebro64 wants to say, what's the funniest moment you've ever had during any of your recording sessions? Oh, I mean, the Thunderbland one is pretty high up there. Um, let's see. You know, it's funny because it's like, think of something funny right now. And I'm like, uh, uh, nope, nothing funny ever happens in my life. Sorry. Uh, funny. <laughs> Tell us a joke. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it, this is a weird funny session it's not it doesn't it wasn't funny it was funny to me at the time okay so basically i was doing a session and um there are these long sessions and i have to make sure that my voice was very consistent and so i had this like uh breath spray it's called entertainer's secret and it just like helps with any like uh irritation and it like keeps things smooth and all of that stuff it's whatever i don't use it anymore after this happened um <laughs> But uh, so I took a spray and like it hit me in the wrong spot and it, it basically went into my like in, and instead of like not you don't inhale when you like spray it and then you swallow and then you continue doing your life. But I no. actually inhaled like a tiny, 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 tiny droplet of it. And I like to say you swallowed something down the wrong pipe is wrong. I was like, oh my God, my throat has closed up and I'm like, <gasps> and I needed to like brace my, you know how like you can kind of like brace your arms on something and get like a yeah. deep breath. I needed to brace my arms on something, but there was nothing around me in the booth to brace my arms on. Like there wasn't a stool or a table that would like Especially support my weight. Mic. So yeah. <laughs> so in, in these booths, there's like a, uh, if you've seen a picture of a booth ever, you'll see like a big window and there's like a tiny little ledge. And I was like, I can use that ledge. So I'm walking to the ledge of the window, which is the booth where the director and the engineer are. And I've braced myself on it. And I'm just going like, <gasps> and I look like a fish gasping for air. And the director and the engineer are like, is she dying? Because this was just in between takes. I didn't say anything, you know, like I just took a spray and then I'm suddenly dying. And they were like, do we need to call a doctor? And then like, as they were thinking that I like put my hand up sort of like, like, I'm okay. I think I need to take a break though. Um, <clears throat> yeah. The total opposite effect of like, now my voice is all hoarse because I was coughing and dying and <laughs> <laughs> so we took I actually ended up we had to, we had to end the session like an hour early because my voice didn't sound the same after that I felt really bad um it happens <laughs> but yeah it was it was it's funny after the fact knowing that I like gave everybody a heart attack thinking they were gonna have to call me an ambulance or something <laughs> just because I swallowed a tiny little droplet of throat stuff the wrong way so now I I don't do sprays anymore because I'm terrified that that'll happen again it's nightmare material right there. <laughs> yep. Oh, boy. <laughs> so, man, I did not mean to quote our guy Sojiro there, but all the same. Uh, so there have been some questions about, you know, just repeating everything. Uh, but Kuso Saiki asks, what was your favorite line as Kasumi? Um, whether that's a long form scene or. Nah, it's just still going to be hello, senpai. It's fine. Hello. <laughs> It's got to be hello. I love hello, senpai. When I like sign things, they're like, put your favorite line. I'm like, all right, it's going to be hello, senpai. It was just, it was so like, for me, that was like, I get to do the thing, the thing that I've been super excited to do. So yeah, uh, so cool. it's, the, it's the hello, senpai. Sorry. I know there's a lot of really cool yeah, things. Thing she says a lot of really great things. But you're giving but everyone in the senpai. chat exactly what they want. Okay, they there we go. It could it. just be an hour of me saying hello, senpai, and it'll get a 100, 10 out of 10 review. You know, <laughs> a lot of people make those YouTube videos where they just say the same thing for about an hour. So I think <laughs> you could probably get, you know, a couple hundred thousand views just by doing that. That's okay. I'm all right. <laughs> quick, for sure. Real quick. So we, you, you said you had a little bit of a gotcha addiction with So what was your reaction? We you got a reprisal roles to Catherine from Fire Emblem Heroes. Well, that was fun. I it was like one of those, you know, I saw a bunch of other people 
in it. So I was like, well, maybe one day Catherine. And then one day Catherine happened and I did it. But I think that was, we were, I want to say we recorded that during lockdown. So I did it from home and I didn't get to see my friends, but it was fine. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it was, you know, it was lockdown's, fun. Lockdown's hard. It's pretty hard, but let's, yeah. uh, we'll avoid questions about that for now. Um, <laughs> one final question that we can maybe ask here before we get too deep into overtime. Um, so how do you think that Cynthia from the great pretender and Kasumi would interact? This is by Mike lover 69. Ooh, a Cynthia question. I think Cynthia Ooh. would think Kasumi is absolutely adorable and would probably try to teach her the ways of the con artists because she'd be like you know you've got all the equipment you just got to learn how to use it <laughs> and she'd be like huh what oh um no thank you <laughs> she's too good to be corrupted yeah she's yeah. too sweet she'd be like but i have a dream to be a world famous gymnast i feel like something would be like okay well when you're done with that dream give me a call <laughs> I've the got world work of for you. Prime is waiting for you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let's squeeze in one last question before we start wrapping up here. And I'm actually really curious about this myself. Old Mercer25 wants to say, which line took the most takes as cost me? And, I, and if you know the number, how many takes was it? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. And I don't know. Um, I, I can't say for sure that it took the most takes, but I will say we did record a lot of variations of Hello Senpai. <laughs> So oh, it, if it's not the most, it's definitely in in the top, like, I feel like in the top 10, probably, because we we had just not just trying to get the delivery right, but there were, like I said, variations on the line because we weren't sure how we wanted to, uh, how, well, I say we, like I had any say in it, but how they wanted to localize it to best, you know, encapsulate the mood of the scene and the joke. Um but... I feel like there's an Animaniacs joke hiding in there. <laughs> <laughs> we know a remote farm. Um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> You're good. You're good. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so probably, uh, yeah, and I mean, yeah, I'm trying to think if there are any other really good ones that we spent a lot of time on. I mean, we spent a lot of time on all of the, like, emotional stuff, but I can't say we did, like, necessarily a ton of takes on it. So, yeah, that's all I can think of, at least. <laughs> that is A-OK, -okay because we are at 6 o'clock EST. So this is technically where, you know, time would effectively run out. But, um, but we were late, so you can have a few more minutes. Yeah, we have a few more time, <laughs> if that's all right with you. It is all right with me. All right. So then let's, uh, let's ask another question, then. Uh, will Bill, the Aspie Rebel, asks, Who do you think would win in a duel, Kasumi or Arfoir? Um, probably Kasumi because R4 uh, is a comedy villain, and even if she wins, she'll figure out a way to lose. <laughs> as one does as a comedy yeah. villain. As one does, yeah. Very Team Rocket esque. <laughs> Last yeah. night again. Uh, let's see if I can squeeze in one more. Oh, I sure can. I mean, uh, Justin wants to. Did you ever wish that Cosmi would become a female protagonist character? Um, no, I, I can't say I wished that for, like, again, it would be cool, but I really love her, her story and, like, everything that happens with her story-wise, and Persona isn't really necessarily the kind of game where you get that kind of character depth from the player character, if you know what I mean. Like, the player character has a lot going on, and it's super cool, but that kind of backstory wouldn't really vibe with a with a main character or a playable character, I guess. So, I mean, I guess she's playable. She's part of the party, but you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah, there's a lot of depth there that, you know, if you're the player discovering that about your own character, then it becomes tricky. Yeah. Sure. If you have time, I can ask you one last question. Yes, let's go for it. Right, and this one isn't necessarily related to Persona, but another role that you had as Nozomi. Uh, from Kami, were there any plans to dub the insert songs in the Love Live dub, or was the plan to always keep the Japanese insert songs? Uh, 
I wasn't part of production, so I can't say with 100% certainty, but my understanding was it was always going to just be the the Japanese insert songs. Um, sure. There was a question for at one point where there's like a point in the series where they sing a couple measures of a song with no background track, and they weren't sure if they needed us to sing that or not. I think they ended up going with the Japanese for that, which... That's fine. Makes sense. It, when it comes to music in anime, like there's so much. And then when you add like an idol group like Muse on top of it, there's so many like rights and distribution and copyright and legal stuff that goes into it that it's uh, it gets complicated. So, Absolutely. yeah, um, it makes sense for me that it was it was Japanese, which is fine. Uh, I think I think uh, Nozomi's Japanese voice sings a lot better than I do. So <laughs> it's OK by is... me. Real question is, would you have done it if they had come up to you? Oh, now? I absolutely would have done. I mean, I sing for I for cells of work. I'll if you pay me money to sing, I'll sing. I you might regret it, but <laughs> but yeah, I love singing. It. I mean, like I said uh, earlier, very early on in the panel, you know, I started as pursuing Broadway, so I do love singing. I just don't know. Circle. I don't think very highly of myself as a singer. What can I say? I'm friends with so many incredible singers that when I hear myself sing, I'm like, ugh. <laughs> What a relatable feeling. <laughs> <laughs> well, looks like we don't want to hold you up too much longer. Is there anything you want to plug one more time here for all the people in the chat here for them to follow you at or anything? Any special uh, yeah. So just a reminder that my Twitter is Laura Post Voice. I'll do the JoJo's poses. My Instagram is Laura Post Voice. And my Twitch is Laura Post Voice. Uh, I'm actually haven't tweeted it. Usually when I stream on Twitch, I tweet it on my Twitter uh, and I haven't tweeted yet today, but I am going to stream tonight, but I'm not streaming Persona 5 Royal. I'm going to have my friend Rochelle over and we're going to stream Overcooked for the first time ever. Uh, oh, we that's are, gonna be we fun. are pro level. We are pro level Overcooked players. We've been hyping ourselves up for like three years now. So we figure it's time to put our money where our mouth is and uh show the world how good we are hopefully um <laughs> we haven't played it in, in since like lockdown so it'll be interesting we might be horrible now uh but yeah it's gonna be fun so if you're not busy doing super cool things with persona con and you want to pop in and see us do some overcooked on twitch i will be doing that tonight and i will tweet the link probably shortly after this panel since i still haven't done that <laughs> I'll retweet on the Persona on Twitter to shout you out. Awesome. Cool. <laughs> That's awesome. Ah, uh, the joys of streaming. Oh, look yeah. at all these more than one person. Chat. All these Cosmies. They're so cute. Oh, <laughs> so much love for Kasumi. <laughs> My girl. That was another thing when I was recording because I had been paying so much attention to the Japanese stuff. It took me a really long time to remember that my name was Kasumi and not Kasumi. <laughs> mm, yeah. For, for the localization. That'll like I was it. used to all the vanilla, like the names for you know, like on Takamaki and yep. Yuji Sakamoto Sakama, and Sakamoto. all that Sakamoto, yeah. Like I was like, I'm good every on that, time. but I was like, right, I'm Kasumi, not Kasumi. <laughs> it's me every <laughs> time. <laughs> Can we get one more hello, senpai, before we start wrapping up? Sure. Thank you. Hello, senpai. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> giving the people what they want thank you so much for joining us today thank you so much for having me I always Super like fun. having people returning and it's so great that you came back and are giving people exactly what they want <laughs> this is the content you subscribe for hello this is why you would everywhere. end persona crowd <laughs> <laughs> all righty well uh, if that's all, I think that's all for this Q&A. We have a few more panels left in the day, including some uh, Persona 5 charity, uh, Level Up for Charities, Persona 5 fan dub. We also have the Smash Bros. tourney that's kicking off shortly. And then at the end of the night as well, uh, Yudo will be doing their virtual rave. Come check it out if you get the chance. And then tomorrow we have special guest stars for Q&As, Tom Taylorson and Wendy Lee. So... If you enjoyed Q&As like this, you might be able to get more next time, tomorrow. See you Sunday, y'all. Bye-bye. That was fun. Pull in, Laura. Yeah. Yeah.
Okay. That was good. That was good. Yes. Uh, ran out of questions right at the end. <laughs> we <laughs> almost got every single one answered. What's the role? Who's that robot voice? Maybe me? The robot is me. Oh, okay. Oh. Yeah, I'm okay. It's okay. All right, give it a few minutes, and then I'll lock the chat. I'm at, like, three brain cells right now, at most. <laughs> Boy, so I would be at three brain cells, but I would be at three brain cells, but Guilty Gear is starting since so I kind of need to have more. Laura. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Laura, I would like to say thank you for giving me an answer on my Love Life producer's question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. One day, one day I will ask the producers, one day. <laughs> The, the the like couple of bars that uh we did actually sing those i don't remember it was i think it's at the middle of the first you know after it's like oh are we gonna give up we're not gonna give up and we they sing this song without any background mm -hmm. we did actually record they adapted those like four lines and we recorded it but uh they didn't i'm pretty sure they didn't use it it's Damn, uh, something with the mic it sounds like you're roboting a little bit yeah it's... yeah i i thought it was just me for a second <laughs> Uh -oh. Yeah, you're you're just uh, a little robotty. That's all. You being me? Yes. Yeah, yes, yeah. Laura. Yes. Sorry. Mm. Uh, I, I don't know what. To... Okay. Just be I a. Will do that. Uh, still, well, it's, it's not it's not the panel anymore. So at least yeah, yeah that. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> we still going until after the panel. <laughs> Yeah, this was the best time for Mike to turn into a toaster. Yeah. <laughs> um, Once again, yeah, thanks. Yeah, I want to say go. thank you so much for coming again, Laura Post. It's been a pleasure being able to interview you again. So you're, you're always a joy to talk with. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Uh, yes. I had a lot of fun again. <laughs> glad to hear it. Very glad. I'm really happy to come back. I'm sorry that I'm a robot right now. Um, <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. We're happy to deal with. We're happy to deal with the technical issues, and we're glad that everything worked out in the end. Mm -hmm. Oh, I also want to say, um, like we did last year, we're also asking our artist, Ali, and any artist people, we are going to try and compile another art package for you to send over as thank you for being a part of our convention again. That would be wonderful. I really loved all the art last time. <laughs> we're glad to hear it. Yeah. Always fun to have voice actors like yourself come and... Uh, talk with all of us and do all that good stuff it's really appreciated mm -hmm. yeah I, 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 again thanks for inviting me this has been super fun <laughs> absolutely an honor and uh we'll absolutely tune into your streams too because yeah, yeah, it's really fun <laughs> <laughs> yeah i better go send out a tweet come to think of it i'll yeah. link you in the persona con twitter and i'll tag you in that too cool um, yeah i'll make sure to be there before i have to handle my rave tonight <laughs> <laughs> Now I have to just hope I don't suck at Overcooked. I also have to make sure that Overcooked's <laughs> properly installed. Like, there's so many things like, right, 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 Overcooked. It's okay, cool. Yeah, cool. let's start the stream. Wait, do I have the game installed? You know, it's that's yeah. a good idea. Yeah, yeah, we, it's we, been been we finally got our PlayStation 5, so we have to, like, there's a Twitch channel that we subscribed to, and they, but they basically they use the bots for good. <laughs> wow. So the person has a bot, and it sends to the Twitch channel and goes, these are in stock, and then you click the link and you can buy it. Wow. That's how I finally managed nice. to get one. Do you know the name of that bot? Uh, yes. Do, 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 do. Give me one second. I can find it. Pretty rare to get nowadays. Killer cam something. Where is it at? That'd be, I'm like, I've to told it to like three different people. Well, all I have to do is find one of the people I told it to. It's already it Among okay. Us fan art. Oh, no. Killer, killer <laughs> the Among Us fan art. <laughs> <laughs> it's Killer Cam 1020. So, like K I L L E R C A M 1020. Awesome. Thank you so much. This is going to be useful. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, we still had to drive. We had to make like an hour drive to get the one that. We were able to buy, but wow. we finally we were able Damn. to get one after almost like seven and nine months of trying. <laughs> <laughs> that is as you got one. The dedication is impressive. 
<laughs> we really wanted a PlayStation. And five, we wanted to play Miles. I got Miles. I got Miles with my PS5, but I haven't played it yet because I haven't played the first one. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> I just kind of we got that play, one. Uh, we were able to play Integrate too, which was nice. So, oh, yes. yeah. uh, yo, looking forward to that. Yeah. All right, I should get going. But yeah. Thank you. Again. Oh. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Honestly, oh, thank you. Bye. 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 Oh, she's so sweet.